Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, and watching. This is my continuing series of tutorials on Luminar 4. This is episode number eight. We're getting close to the end. You guys have been watching these and posing a lot of questions. Some I know and some I'm trying to figure out, to be honest. Um, I love that, actually. It challenges me to get better and learn more. So thank you for interacting and coming back. If you haven't yet subscribed, please uh, please do so. Don't hesitate to like the video, share with your friends, and comment if you have uh, some feedback you want to give me, good, bad, or indifferent, or just your experience so far with Luminar 4. I trust it's going well, and I hope that it is. Okay, in video number eight, we are in the last filter, God, I called it filters, last tool category, and that is professional. So let's just hop over there. If uh, if you're in the, uh, the library, don't be in the library, if you're in the edit module, professional is the last one here. And this playlist has all the previous videos I've done in Luminar 4, which is in the 30s now. So there's a lot of videos out here already. Okay, let's get started. This photo, um, I'm going to uh, walk through these six different tools, almost called them filters, um, here in the Pro tab. I will tell you, I went, uh, you can see that the Essentials tab is highlighted. I went into AI Accent and brightened the photo a little bit. That's the base photo. And that's my new starting point because it was just a little too dark and I wanted to bring it a little bit more to life. Therefore, you can more easily see what I'm doing. So here we go. Advanced Contrast is the first tool here on Pro. And if you click into it, you see you basically have six sliders. Uh, you do have Edit Mask, which you have on all filters effectively. But it um, Advanced Contrast, as the name implies, gives you really specific control over contrast in highlights, shadows, uh, and the midtones. So, um, the truth is, I don't really think that there's a specific thing you do on every photo because every photo is different, light and contrast are different. So I recommend you come in and experiment. Um, and I usually just come in here and just kind of move these things around and kind of figure out what it is I think I like. Um, the balance kind of helps you find the midpoint. And what I find is that I'm usually moving that balance slider around until I get to something that I kind of like. I think something like that, it kind of pops the highlights a little bit. Let me turn this off so you don't see what also AI Accent uh, has done to this. There's the before and there's the after. So it gives a little bit more contrast, a little bit more pop. I think it makes a nice little impact on the photo. I'm gonna hit reset and we'll pop over to adjustable gradient, which is my next one. And honestly, adjustable gradient has long been one of my favorite filters in Luminar. Um, as you can see here, top and bottom are divided um, and you have the ability with set orientation you click on that, and as soon as you have your mouse over here, you'll see you have this little thing. You can move it up and down, you can tilt it, uh, and you can also increase or decrease the size of it. So what does this mean? This is your dividing line between what top and bottom is. This is you telling the tool, hey, I want that to be the top and that to be the bottom. You can rotate if you would like. Um, I don't really need to rotate here. I've got a flat horizon. So I'm gonna try to get that back kind of straight. Everything above this center line is top. Everything below it is bottom. But between the center line and that first top line, it's kind of a gradient zone where the changes you make in top, if you notice over here, these tabs, the changes you make in top are gonna to be applied kind of more subtly in that gradient zone and above the line more fully. And the opposite is true going below. Um, for bottom of the photo, from the center line down to that first line, that is your gradient where it kind of starts at zero at the center line, gradually increases to that uh, bottom line, and then you basically get the full effect below that. So that's what that means. And that's why you're able to increase or decrease the size of the gradient zone. I'm gonna put it about like that, put it right on the horizon. For top, you can come in, four that was three, four controls, exposure, contrast, shadows, and highlights for that, and then for color, if you will, warmth and vibrance. Everything's an experiment. There are no rules. This is like kindergarten and you're coloring. There's no rules. Just do what you want. Um, I'll often use the contrast tools here because I like them. Um, I will. Um, I don't need shadows here. I think I'll give it a little bit of warmth and a little bit of vibrance. Um, it doesn't actually look that good, does it? I'm going to take that down. Let me try cool. Ooh, yeah, cool looks kind of good. Now, you will notice above the fold, which is basically the horizon, it's now cooler than the bottom because I haven't done something similar yet in the bottom. Um, that's how that works, and then you just go into the bottom and do the same thing. 
What I find I'm often doing in my photos, especially cityscapes and landscapes, is increasing the exposure in the bottom so you can see what I'm doing there. Just be careful you don't go too far because you will start to see the gradient line. So I usually go kind of subtle, um, you know, and even though I used AI accent, um, having a nice little extra pop with this filter, I think works out really well. And I called it a filter again. Um, Satur not saturation, that's shadows. I would lift shadows a little bit. I'd probably come down here, maybe cool it off so it matches the uh, overall uh, photo and then maybe give it a little vibrance. Again, every photo is different. This one um, doesn't really need a huge color pop, uh, but you do have a little bit of color control there. But there's the before and the after. Let me reset adjustable gradient. And now we'll go to Dodge and Burn, if I can open it. Okay, Dodge and Burn, not new to Luminar, uh, just as the others aren't either, but it basically allows you to lighten or darken selectively with a brush. So you see it says Start Painting, click on that. You have your little menu. You can choose Lighten or Darken. Notice that when you choose one, when you're in Lighten, means you're gonna brighten it, you're gonna add exposure. So there's a plus in the center of that little circle here, my mouse. If you click over to Darken, there's a minus, which means you're gonna reduce the exposure. Um, and then if you don't like what you did, you can just erase it. I'm gonna come over here, lighten. I'm gonna left bracket key to shrink that. And you can pick your strength, which I highly recommend you experiment with. I usually start with a lower strength. Uh, this is also a brush size, right? Which I was doing with my bracket key. I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna paint a little bit lighter onto this boat because I wanna see that boat. That's a cool little thing. It's right there, it's drawn my eye in. Bracket key, I'm gonna brighten this boat a little bit as well. So that's pretty subtle. Um, here's the thing, you can um, erase if you want. You can kind of go back and forth, lighten and darken, and you can do all that uh, within this one filter. You don't have to add a new layer to go from lighten to darken. You can do all that right here. Then when you're done, you just say, click done. Here's a cool little thing that I like, which is the overall amount, or that's an opacity slider for this. And so if at 100, you're like, well, it's really too bright on the boat. Okay, well, let me just take that down. Maybe it looks better at, you know, 51, you know, who knows? Um, and you can turn this on and off to check. There it is before as darker, and there it is brighter. And maybe I want more than 51, maybe I want 65. The point is you have the opacity slider, it's an amount slider, same thing. Just allows you to customize the look of what you painted with dodge and burn brush strokes. It's a great way to manage the light and be very selective about it. Hey, I wanna darken here, I wanna lighten there. And even though AI Accent is great at helping you do that, there are times, like in this image, even though I already used AI Accent, I wanted to come back and do a little bit more. Dodge and Burn is perfect for that. So um, I highly recommend spending some time with that tool. It's very powerful. Okay, close Dodge and Burn. Color Enhancer, ooh wee. This is fun, I love color. If you've seen any of my videos, you can probably tell. I do some black and whites, but man, color, ooh, gets me happy. I'm doing the Homer Simpson looking at donuts kind of fingers. Um, okay, so Brilliance and Warmth, as the name implies, uh, to the right, brilliance is kind of like a vibrance. You can see the colors are really starting to pop. They're getting kind of garish, kind of cartoonish here. So I recommend being a little bit careful with that. Uh, and warmth, if you go to the right, you warm it up. If you go to the left, you cool it off. Cool looks really good here, um, but I'm gonna put it back to zero. Very simple slider. Okay, color contrast. This is two sliders, the amount and the hue. Pick the hue first, because what you're telling the photo is, I wanna increase contrast for whatever color I choose. Let me show you, if I leave it here on these reds, which is a little bit in the sky, and then drag the amount, I'm increasing the contrast between that color and the color that's opposite that color. So it basically plays off the um, colors that are opposite of it. So if you're not familiar with color wheel, you might wanna look that up, but um, red and bluish are kind of opposite, right? And so um, as I chose red, and increase the color contrast, it, um, it basically brightened the red parts and darkened the parts that are opposite, right? If I go over here and change it to blue, it kind of does the opposite. That looks terrible here, so I won't spend any time on that, but that's what color contrast does. Um, it's also very subtly good at giving you a really nice little pop of color, so I recommend experimenting with it. Split color warmth is um, just a wonderful filter, so basically, Drag that to the right and you're warming up the warm colors. If you drag it to the left, you're kind of neutralizing the warm colors. 
The opposite, let me double click that. The opposite is true with cool. If you go to the left, you're cooling off the cool colors, but if you go to the right, you're kind of neutralizing them. So again, it's very powerful color control, allows you to sort of, um, I don't wanna say bounce one color off the other, but it basically allows you to manage and sort of control the look and impact of colors in your photo. If you get into advanced settings, I, I could spend hours talking about this next section, color balance, because I absolutely just love it. In fact, I've done uh, videos about color balance in the past in previous versions of Luminar. I may come back and do one around this, but basically, as you see, you take color balance, um, excuse me, you have shadows, midtones, and highlights, and then within, within each, you have basically, this is the color, these are opposite colors, right? So red and cyan, just like I was talking about up here with color contrast, that cyan is the blue, red is the opposite. So basically here you can say, hey shadows, I either wanna make the shadows more red or I wanna make them more cyan, right? Um, same with magenta and green. This is a tint slider, if you will. I wanna take the shadows more magenta to make them more purple or do I wanna make them more green? No, I don't wanna make them more green. Um, and then the last one, yellow, blue, same thing. Now keep in mind, you're just in shadow. So that the power comes into experimenting with each of these sliders and going into midtones and highlights. Like for this photo, I might look at the highlights and say, I want a little bit more red up in there because I want some red in those highlights because it was a sunset, but you can't really tell. Maybe I want a little magenta too. Maybe I want a little yellow. And you start to get some nice color impact. So you can use this to balance out the colors, but you can also use it to do creative sort of color looks in your photos. And that's it. Every, every one of these has a mask. So I'm gonna hit reset and keep moving because like I said, I could spend a lot of time just on color enhancer and specifically on color balance. Okay, now photo filter. This one's pretty straightforward. You just pick a color or a hue and an amount and it applies it globally across the entire photo. So I'll just leave it on red and as I drag it, you know, very subtly, low amounts, I'm at seven, you're starting to get some nice looking colors, all right? I'm at 15, starting to get kind of busy, not busy, kind of intense. And okay, when I get over here, it's just, it, you know, I might as well give up. So um, that's how that works. So you might say, well, I like that, but maybe I don't want the reds. Maybe I want more of the blues to come up. Okay, so I want to create more of a blue look in my photo. There you go. You move your hue over to blue, and then you um, drag the amount to whatever uh, sort of fits the bill for you. And then you have a saturation slider, as you can see. So this will just reduce the saturation. Um, again, it's an interplay of colors kind of thing. Not something I do on every photo, but it absolutely has its place. And it's awesome to have here. And for the last one, we're getting into split toning, which, ooh wee, another one of my favorites. I love split toning. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you've seen me use it a lot. Basically, you separate highlights from shadows and you pick a color and a saturation level for each and you just go have a lot of fun. So highlights, right? So again, I'm in the red hue. I'm just gonna drag the saturation to the right and you will see that those areas that are highlights in the photo start taking on that red, right? Because that's what I'm telling it to do. The shadow areas don't change because they're down here. Um, you might wanna come into shadows and say, well, I want a little bit more blue in the shadows. Um, and you start to get a really beautiful looking photo, I think, and that's balancing those colors between the highlights and shadows. And if you keep in mind the color wheel, what we talked about on the color balance sliders in the color enhancer tool, um, if you think about the opposite or complementary colors, um, that reddish and that bluish go together. So I think when you're playing with highlights and shadows, you're, again, it's, it's a different kind of color balance, if you will. Um, and it allows you just to do um, some interesting color combinations, but very quickly you can have a very beautiful result. I think it's beautiful, you may not, and that's cool. But um, going from there to there, and just on this filter, I went from there to there. Nice little color pop, and it took, what, five seconds or something? So very powerful. That is split toning, separates the tones, the highlight uh, tones and the shadow tones. Then you pick a color for each. Um, there's also a balance slider. So you might say, I like it, but I wanna air a little bit more on the highlights color. And okay, well then you just drag the, um, the balance slider toward the highlights, and you'll see it gets more of that pinkish red. Or if you wanna go more to the shadows, you go this way and get a little bit more towards the shadows. I'll often use leave balance in the center, but it certainly has its place. And that is it, my friends. That is the six filter, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, six tools in the professional uh, tab for uh, photo editing uh, sliders in Luminar 4. So I hope that's a helpful overview. I will come back and do some a little bit more in depth on some of these in the future, but I wanted to give you a highlight 
And that was episode number eight, my friends. Uh, as I said before, please leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, those kind of things. Let me know what you're thinking, and I'll be back soon with episode nine and then episode 10. And after that, I got a lot of other things planned. So keep tuning in. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a super awesome day. I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.